The best men in all ages keep classic traditions alive. Before you contradict an old man, my fair friend, you should endeavor to understand him. The passions grafted on wounded pride are the most inveterate, they are green and vigorous in old age. Old places and old persons in their turn, when spirit dwells in them, have an intrinsic vitality of which youth is incapable, precisely, the balance and wisdom that come from long perspectives and broad foundations. Nothing is inherently and invincibly young except spirit. And spirit can enter a human being perhaps better in the quiet of old age and dwell there more undisturbed than in the turmoil of adventure. Never have I enjoyed youth so thoroughly as I have in my old age. What better comfort have we, or what other profit in living than to feed, sobered by the truth of nature, a while upon her beauty, and hand her torch of gladness to the ages following after. Incapacity to appreciate certain types of beauty may be the condition sine qua non for the appreciation of another kind. The greatest capacity both for enjoyment and creation is highly specialized and exclusive, and hence the greatest ages of art have often been strangely intolerant. The invectives of one school against another, perverse as they are philosophically, are artistically often signs of health, because they indicate a vital appreciation of certain kinds of beauty, a love of them that has grown into a jealous passion. Never have I enjoyed youth so thoroughly as I have in my old age. In writing dialogues in Limbo, The Last Puritan, and now all these descriptions of the friends of my youth and the young friends of my middle age, I have drunk the pleasure of life more pure, more joyful than it ever was when mingled with all the hidden anxieties and little annoyances of actual living. Nothing is inherently and invincibly young except spirit. And spirit can enter a human being perhaps better in the quiet of old age and dwell there more undisturbed than in the turmoil of adventure. The tendency to gather and to breed philosophers in universities does not belong to ages of free and humane reflection. It is scholastic and proper to the Middle Ages and to Germany. Old age is as forgetful as youth, and more incorrigible. It displays the same inattentiveness to conditions. Its memory becomes self-repeating and degenerates into an instinctive reaction, like a bird's chirp. Animals are born and bred in litters. Solitude grows blessed and peaceful only in old age. Even the most inspired verse, which boasts not without a relative justification to be immortal, becomes in the course of ages a scarcely legible hieroglyphic. The language it was written in dies, a learned education and an imaginative effort are requisite to catch even a vestige of its original force. Nothing is so irrevocable as mind. Only the dead have seen the end of the war. Those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. A child educated only at school is an uneducated child. There is no cure for birth and death save to enjoy the interval. We must welcome the future, remembering that soon it will be the past, and we must respect the past, remembering that it was once all that was humanly possible. The spirit's foe in man has not been simplicity, but sophistication. Society is like the air, necessary to breathe but insufficient to live on. The family is one of nature's masterpieces. Friends are generally of the same sex, 
For when men and women agree, it is only in the conclusions, their reasons are always different. History is a pack of lies about events that never happened told by people who weren't there. To be interested in the changing seasons is a happier state of mind than to be hopelessly in love with spring. A man's feet should be planted in his country, but his eyes should survey the world. Oaths are the fossils of piety. Life is not a spectacle or a feast, it is a predicament. The great difficulty in education is to get experience out of ideas. One's friends are that part of the human race with which one can be human. The truth is cruel, but it can be loved, and it makes free those who have loved it. To me, it seems a dreadful indignity to have a soul controlled by geography. When men and women agree, it is only in their conclusions, their reasons are always different. The wisest mind has something yet to learn. Fanaticism consists of redoubling your effort when you have forgotten your aim. Graphic design is the paradise of individuality, eccentricity, heresy, abnormality, hobbies and humors. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Theory helps us to bear our ignorance of facts. To knock a thing down, especially if it is cocked at an arrogant angle, is a deep delight of the blood. An artist is a dreamer consenting to dream of the actual world. Nonsense is so good only because common sense is so limited. The young man who is not wept is a savage, and the older man who will not laugh is a fool. Intelligence is quickness in seeing things as they are. Music is a means of giving form to our inner feelings, without attaching them to events or objects in the world. Fashion is something barbarous, for it produces innovation without reason and imitation without benefit. The body is an instrument, the mind its function, the witness and reward of its operation. Religion in its humility restores man to his only dignity, the courage to live by grace. The dreamer can know no truth, not even about his dream, except by awaking out of it. Sanity is madness put to good use. In Greece, wise men speak and fools decide. Music is essentially useless, as is life. Friendship is almost always the union of a part of one mind with a part of another. People are friends in spots. 
The philosophy of the common man is an old wife that gives him no pleasure, yet he cannot live without her, and resents any aspersions that strangers may cast on her character. Parents lend children their experience and a vicarious memory. Children endow their parents with a vicarious immortality. It is a revenge the devil sometimes takes upon the virtuous, that he entraps them by the force of the very passion they have suppressed and think themselves superior to.